Hi, this is Lisa with Hope Grows. I'm here today to talk to you about uh, dealing with feelings over the holiday season. Uh, this topic uh, of depression and sadness and loneliness has been brought to um, our attention as maybe a topic that could be um, just something that caregivers could really benefit from. So if you're not aware of who we are and what we do, uh, our organization is Hope Grows and what we do is cultivate caregiver wellness. So we're basically looking after the emotional and mental well-being of that caregiver while they're on their journey um, caring for their loved one. So just a little bit of background information about who we are and what we do. A lot of our services that we provide are um, eat by phone and virtual. We do mental health counseling and I would say that our biggest program uh, is Think Caregiver and it's a phone check-in program so caregivers can opt in to receive a monthly check-in phone call from us and you know it's just a it's just hi how this is Hope Grows calling to see how you're doing just very low-key we can provide resources referrals if needed uh, like I said we do uh, emotional and mental health counseling here at Hope Grows as well we do different support groups and educational components uh, oh, we do turkey meals at Thanksgiving. We do also um, a celebrating you event once a year for caregivers to have a day just for them. Our services are based around the use of positive, mindful, and holistic techniques and that approach as well. Uh, we use the you know positive psychology and mindfulness and a lot of things that we do. And I would say that our, our biggest part of what sets us aside from anybody else out there is that we connect to nature. So we have this, our core value is that we firmly believe that connecting to nature and the natural world is therapeutic, and we pull that in to help caregivers with rest, balance, and rejuvenation. So just a little bit about who we are. Uh, I wanted to provide that. You can get information on our website at hopegrows.net, sign up for services through the programs tab at the top of the page, and or give us a call and, uh, or an email. That information is on the homepage of our website. So um, this year alone, uh, it's, you know, every year at this time, we always pull statistics together of like who we've, how many people we've helped and you know, where we're at with our services. And last year at this time, we provided services, 418 um, caregivers and families received support from us. And this year at the same time, one year later, we've um, increased that by 70%. So at this point, we provided support and services to 712 families and their caregivers. <clears throat> We were just amazed at that number. I knew we were busy this year, but I didn't realize that we were that busy. <laughs> so, you know, please, if you're in need, reach out and support us, but, or not support us, reach out and, and get support for you. <clears throat> so yeah, I wanted to just talk a little bit about the holiday season. You know, it's a really fun time of year with parties, celebrations, gatherings with family and friends. I know with COVID this year, that's, that's probably not gonna happen. And, um, you know, we have family members that are in facilities and we're not able to get in touch with them or be with them. And it's, you know, it creates sadness. It creates some grief and loneliness and distance. And, um, you know, so today I'm just bringing a little bit of some uh, tools and techniques that you could use moving forward and also uh, help you to identify if you are uh, experiencing depression and, and, you know, who you could seek support for with that. So, um, <clears throat> right, so COVID has become such an unwelcome visitor in our lives this year. It has become um, a place where we've distanced from the norm of what we do. And, um, and, and it also kind of impacts how we used to do things around the holidays. So it really, it really can uh, create a damper on and how you're looking at those holidays or the holiday season. So, um, yeah, so what do we do with that? You know, there's there's factors into why somebody would be suffering with what we call, you know, the holiday blues. And I kind of do that as, you know, holiday blues is kind of a cliche term, I believe, but I truly believe that, you know, th those feelings are real. And um, what causes the holiday blues? Well, there are several things. You know, there's reminders of past losses, and I'm not talking about just loss from a death of someone. You know, this year especially, people could have lost their jobs, they could have lost their businesses because of the lockdowns that were imposed. Uh, you know, just loss of a pet, there's so many. If you if you made a list of different losses, you know, your page would probably be filled. Not that you've experienced, but if you looked at the big picture of what it is that we could lose along our journey uh, in life, there's there, it's quite a bit. <clears throat> and then there's what we call unrealistic expectations. 
you know, we think that the holidays should be carried out at, at, in a certain way. You know, I think the Hallmark Channel, which I love to watch some of those movies, but I think that and along with commercials and these picture perfect scenes creates this, this view of what the holidays are supposed to be. And I think in some cases it can, it can create those unrealistic realistic expectations. Um, you know, and especially this year, spending time, uh, the holiday alone, spending time alone during the holiday could be something that could cause sadness and frustration, uh, being too far away from family or not being allowed to visit. And if your parent or loved one is in a nursing facility, I know in some cases, the caregivers that we're working with, their family member is, um, not, you're not allowed in to see that family member. Um, and then there's the true grieving of a loss of a loved one, you know, so you may have experienced just a recent loss of a family member or, you know, a spouse. And, and that could really cause some reasons for not wanting to celebrate the holiday. And that's okay. That's all right. And that's what we're going to talk about. Uh, and then also a deployed family, a military member, and um, also COVID. COVID sort of at the bottom of my list and it's at the bottom of my list because, yeah, I think we're just all tired of hearing about COVID. Um, so yeah, so holiday blues. So what can we do? So let's, what, one thing we can do is take an inventory of the reasons that may be causing the holiday blues, which we just did. Uh, those could be some of them. That list was not inclusive. That could, there could be other reasons as to why you might be experiencing and that's okay. Write them down. But, uh, you know, there's, I have this picture I wish I could share with you, but it's a picture of a Christmas tree in the snow and it's covered with ornaments and lights. And in the backdrop of this are trees, all kind of evergreen trees that are not decorated. And I know it's hard when you look at those trees, um, you might see yourself as the undecorated tree in the midst, midst of this holiday season. And it's hard looking at that holiday tree and, and the joy that it could bring and feeling like, wow, I don't feel like that tree. I feel like the, the trees that are undecorated. And, and, and again, that's okay. It's, it's, we got to get to that place of being okay with that. Um, and we're going to talk about uh, some techniques that you can do to actually help yourself in that way. So there's three things, three things you can do. One, words of the season. So make a list of all the words that come to mind that are in direct relation to the holiday season. So for example, if I were gonna start to make that list, I would put Christmas tree or Christmas wreath uh, or uh, decorated uh, lights outside the house. So those are some of the things that, I, that come to mind for me when I think of the Christmas season. All right, so you want one, make a list of those words. Second, make a list of all the feelings that those words are supposed to invoke in someone. So for me, putting lights outside or decorating my tree creates for me this peace, this happiness, and this place of joy. Um, and, and, and the holiday season tells me that that's what those words are supposed to do, okay? So I, those, so I wrote down those words, peace, love, and joy, and happiness, because that's what I think those, all those words of the season are supposed to create for you. Third, you want to make a list of your feelings. So what are you feeling when you hear those words of the season? Could be sadness, could be frustration, could be anger. That's okay. It's recognizing so one, make a list of the words of the season. Two, make a list of the feelings that that season is supposed to invoke. And then three, make a list of how you truly are feeling. And, and that is recognizing where you're at in this holiday season. And I think that that's okay to do, and I encourage that. And, and, and the other thing too, and it's okay if those feelings are not what you think the feelings should be during that season. It's, it's, the emotions can be different and that's okay. We have to get a place, to a place of accepting that. So I have this quote, keep your face to the sun and the shadows will fall behind. To me, it's a vision I think of hope. And I want to talk a little bit about hope here. So life does bring about changes. Um, from the way that we used to do things, correct? And this year, we've been tested in that way more than once or twice. So how we carry out work or, or social life or just how we play and work has all changed this year. So when I, when I hear the word hope, I think about how it gives me the strength to get through a difficult time. For me, hope comes from knowing that everything's going to be okay tomorrow even though I don't have any proof of that. 
but what does it mean and how does one hold on to hope? Okay, so I think hope can mean anything we want it to be. So in December, the holidays are thought of the season of perpetual hope, right? But how do we maintain an endless amount of that when things around us seem so dismal? Well, if you think, if you've never watched the movie Home Alone, the very first Home Alone, there's a couple of them. If you've never watched the very first one, I suggest that you do that this holiday season. And what comes to mind is the scene where mom realizes that she had left her son behind, her eight-year-old son back home in Chicago when they were on their flight to Paris. So when she gets to Paris, she ends up putting a plan in place to figure out how she's gonna get home to her son who's home alone, okay? So she sets out on this journey without her whole family. She leaves her whole family behind and she sets out on her own. Uh, it's <laughs> the, the scene where she's at an airport and she's been awake for like 60 hours. She goes up to the ticket agent and she said, oh my gosh, wait a minute, where am I? I've been awake for 60 hours. Where am I? I don't even know where I'm at. Okay, so I've been from Chicago to Paris to Dallas and she looks at the ticket agent. She goes, where the A-G-L-L -L am I? <laughs> So apparently, I think she was in Scranton. I, I'm not sure exactly where she was. <clears throat> but she says to the ticket agent, I'm hungry and I am dirty. And I cried out to the airline ticket agent, even if I have to sell my soul to the devil, I'm going to get home to my eight-year-old son. Now, obviously, I don't think she was going to sell her soul to the devil, <laughs> but that's how desperate she was. And that's how determined she was to get home to him. So is that determination or will or finding her way through that difficult situation a sign of hope? Perhaps. Or is it the will and the way in which she put a plan together in order to find hope to get home to her son? So it's, I think, for, I think that we can use that word hope and implore that meaning in any way we want that's going to work for us. So I want you to think about that. Watch that movie if you've never watched it. If you have watched it, watch it again. I, I love that movie. That's one of my favorite Christmas movies. But I think it really shows what hope is about and how we can get through any difficult situation as long as we put a plan in place to do it. So tools. What can we do? What kind of tools are there? So there's another quote that I want to put out there. Separation and loneliness must be embraced before it's overcome. And I truly, truly believe that. We have to accept our situation and not fight it. If our parent is in a facility and we can't get there to see them, what are we going to do? We have to accept that. We have to then be okay and embrace the change that is created because of that. Then what we need to do is recognize that our, our, what our feelings are. And that's a first good step. And then talk to somebody about it if you need to. And I think by employing those first three steps earlier that I told you about, about putting, making lists of these words and feelings is a good way to recognize your feelings. Then we want to get out of ourself. So get out of yourself by volunteering or trying something new. It's amazing what happens to the brain when we put ourselves out there in a volunteer way. It, it, it endorses the feel-good hormones and it just provides us that overall um, happiness it, it's it's yeah it, it's amazing what that does to the chemistry in the brain when you put yourself out there in a volunteer way then try and enjoy the creative side of being alone you know I, I I love when I'm alone because I start to write I love to write and I don't get to do that too often because I have a lot of noise that's around me good noise you know sometimes bad but good noise um and I think I think one we have to be comfortable with being alone and then you know, start to explore. And then I think you'd be able to find a creative side of who you are when you are alone. And then the other is be creative with how we connect with others and include those people in our plans. So you could, you know, do Zoom calls through the, you know, internet, if that's a possibility, phone calls, reach out to say hello to somebody um, in your building that maybe you don't know and strike up a conversation, put yourself out there in, a, in at first, an uncomfortable way. But that can help us connect with people um, that are currently in maybe our same situation that we're in. And then try to avoid boredom. Write down a list, make specific plans, engage in a virtual visit at this point if you can't physically get to where somebody is. Um, there's also tons of different opportunities out there. All these organizations such as the zoo are putting in different virtual type 
platforms for people to be able to engage in the things that they used to be able to do, like going to the zoo and driving through the zoo to see the lights instead of, you know, being, it, it helps with that social distancing piece. So yeah, so those are some tools. It's not an inclusive list, but that's a list to get started with. So now I wanna just, before we end, I wanna talk about how do we evaluate self for depression. So, you know, is it melancholy? Is it just sad feelings because of the holiday blues or is it true depression? So some of the signs of depression are loss of pleasure in activities, pervasive sadness, appetite changes, sleep um, interruptions, sleep difficulties, fatigue, loss of energy, abnormal restlessness, uh, decreased concentration and decision making, low self esteem, preoccupation with thoughts of suicide. So these are all things to keep in mind. And if they persist for two weeks or longer, I really recommend that you reach out and seek support. So what kind of support should you reach and look out for? Well, one, you can call your, your doctor, um, your medical doctor and get a physical ex examination. Sometimes having a, a, a low vitamin D count or B12, um, can create and mimic um, signs of depression. So just maybe getting a physical examination if it's been a while. Uh, then there's, you know, in some cases, you, you know, antidepressant medications are needed. And I understand that, but I don't think that that's the first go-to with it. Uh, and then talk and cognitive therapy, reaching out and talking to a therapist. Uh, we have several good counselors here at Hope Grows and, um, you know, or a, a psychologist or somebody within your, you know, insurance network. So, you know, there, those are some things to treat depression. So yeah, so that wraps up our, our conversation uh, about, you know, the holiday feelings that may be happening that aren't the most pleasurable holiday feelings at this time. I thought it might be a good uh, time to bring this to everybody's attention. You know, please, um, again, if you are unsure, if you need support, call Hope Grows. You can reach us at 412-369-4673. Uh, or you can email us at info at hopegrows.net or you can go to hopegrows.net website and under the tab programs, there's a form you can fill out to um, have somebody reach out and talk with you. So yeah, so um, again, this is Lisa with Hope Grows and I just wanted to bring this information to you. I hope that you have a wonderful um, holiday season and in that, um, yeah, that you can find some peace, love and joy in that. So take care and I will talk with you soon.